G'day, it's Marshall from MM4x4. Um, in MR Triton today, and we've got our product Automate Sport. Um, I'm going to do a video showing you some of the features of the kit, uh, specifically when towing. So we've got our uh, caravan on the back, it's about 2.6 tonnes, and I'm going to do a drive test, show you some of the features, and then we'll see how it goes. So what we're going to do is a, a route, we're going to repeat it twice. The first time we're going to use uh, Automate Sport on. Uh, we're going to reset the fuel display, so we measure what the economy is by the end. And then we'll do the same thing again, but this time in drive, and we'll compare the results. And I'll reset the trip meter at the same spot, 60 sign. There we go. And we're looking for the relative difference in fuel. So for this run, we've got Automate Sport turned on. And I'll just quickly give you some of the features of Automate Sport. The first thing is, what it's actually doing is it's driving the car in the manual sport mode of the transmission. Um, and that has the advantage that the program will actually lock up more often, uh, in third gear, fourth gear, up to sixth. And it also changes gears faster. So that is a bit like you have a, a valve body upgrade, it actually gives you a sharper gear change. Well, in the sport mode, that's what this transmission does from factory and that means you get less wear on the, on the clutches. So that's a good thing for when you're towing. Another feature is you can see, although we're in D, uh, there's actually three new modes. There's a towing mode, there's a, a what, normal mode, and then there's the sport mode. Uh, today we're doing the test in the towing mode. But in all the modes, what you can actually see is that although you're in D, you can actually see the gear number that you uh, are currently in. And that's a great feature when you're towing. Uh, the controller can also interface with your ADB2 reader so for example the pedal percentage the lockup status and the, the current mode of Automate Sport is displayed on this ultra gauge which isn't provided with the kit these uh, can be purchased separately and it also has a feature where you can get it to lock out the overdrive gears so on the button there's a, a max fourth so basically what it will do is it will hold fourth gear and not go above that bit like the old in the old days the OD off button on your transmission. Another feature of the kit is it's basically using sport mode behind the scenes but it's using that mode in a much more intelligent way to better suit when you're towing. So it changes the gear shift points so that it will stay locked up as much as possible. Uh, it'll also rev out second gear a little bit longer so that when it does change to third it will go into lock up. And basically it's using the existing transmission in a more intelligent way. On the A pillar, you can see the blue light. That just is a visual indication if you're locked up or not. That's if you haven't got like an ultra gauge. So it'll work with scan gauge two, scan gauge three, um, phone apps. And um, basically you can just program them to ask the, the kit, the Automate Sport computer for information and it will display it like what mode it's currently in. To change modes you just simply press the, the LED button and you press it once to go into uh, mode 1 which is normal. You press it twice to go into mode 2 which is towing so think 2 equals tow and you press it three times to go into the sport mode. Now I talked about the shift points being different, so for example it'll rev out second a little harder so that when it changes gears it can go into third locked, that way it doesn't slip in locked, uh, slip in third gear, and revving higher it's counterintuitive, actually creates less slip, so it creates less heat. The other thing is it won't actually go into fifth gear until about 80 kilometres an hour. Now if you're in 80 zone, and you've got winding corners and you're finding it's going fourth, fifth all the time, that's where you can just use the, the max fourth button. So that will just lock out fifth gear and it will just hold fourth all the time. Now the kit is fully plug and play. So you basically just have to remove trim to get to a connector which is in front of the shift lever and you just plug it in, unplug the factory connector and plug our harness in there. And then it plugs onto the ODB2 connector and that gives it the computer, the Automate Sport computer power and data and then there's the, the LED switch on the A-pillar. There's also a factory look button to turn the Automate Sport on and off and also it's a dual switch so it takes up one slot 
and has the on-off button plus the, the overdrive off, the max fourth uh, button. So I'll just tell you a little bit about the history of this car. Um, Caravan World did an article on, on our kits and um, the customer who owns this car, he had his transmission replaced under warranty by Mitsubishi because of the overheating and it um, basically got damaged. So he, he contacted us and at that time we didn't have a kit for the MR. So we've used this car to develop the kit and what started out is just, um, it was only going to be about four or five days to adapt the MQ Triton kit, turned into actually a 12 month development program. Uh, we've already sent a number of kits out for customer feedback and we took that feedback into account which is why we now have a factory switch just to make the make it easier to use. Something else the kit does is when you're coasting it'll actually hold that gear it won't actually upshift so if I was to example at this moment I'm not going to now but if I was to coast over 80 kilometers an hour in the normal mode of operation of Automate Sport it would actually upshift to you to fifth gear but what Automate Sport does in the tow mode is it'll actually hold that gear and it won't upshift because uh, typically what you find is um, you basically want the, want the braking and you want it to be in that lower gear. Automate Sport is different to our other lockup kits. Uh, they actually electrically override the lockup clutch whereas what Automate Sport is doing is it's just working with the transmission that, uh, and it's not overriding the lockup clutch and it's just using the transmission in a more intelligent way which better suits uh, towing or, or, or sportier operation. So like I said, you get three different modes, uh, three new drive modes. The standard factory one is pretty much what I'd call the smooth mode. Um, Automate Sport Normal is uh, similar to drive, but you get the, the nicer and sharper gear changes uh, and it's more responsive. So it gets out of fifth gear earlier. So the car doesn't feel as doughy. And then of course you've got the towing mode and the sport mode and they've all got different shift patterns. And for each of those different modes, you can actually adjust them as well. So if you've got bigger tyres, you can actually have it rev out a bit more if you want. So because it doesn't electrically override the clutch, the, the torque converter solenoid, which drives the torque converter clutch, basically it's doing the same thing you could be doing, which is just going drive sport plus minus, but it's all doing it automatically for you. So it's a bit like, you know, you didn't buy an automatic transmission um, to have to drive it in manual to take advantage of the features of, of the sport mode. So it makes it very easy to use. And you just basically leave it in drive, select tow mode, which is mode two, and just drive the car. You can still put it into sport mode to use engine braking. And you'll see when I do that, you'll see the ECT mode on the ultra gauge will change to zero. And zero means you're actually in sport mode. Alright, well, coming to the start point again, uh, this is the run with Automate Sport on, and looking at the figures, the fuel is down to 19.3, more importantly, the, look at the temperatures, uh, basically the pan temperature is the same as uh, it was when we left, so it hasn't gone up at all. Alright, for this run, we'll do it in D and I'll reset the fuel at the 60 sign, right there, okay, and let's see the results we get. So the route we're driving on today, it's uh, just undulating hills, um, 80 zone most of the way, uh, pretty well just follows uh, the river system with some hills around it, so it's not overly challenging, something like climbing across the Great Dividing Range, but it'll provide an example of the difference uh, in performance between Automate Sport and just the standard drive mode. Now you can see through this section that the torque converter is unlocked. So there's a lot of slip, and you can see that the temperature's climbing. It's already hit, just about hit 100 degrees out of the torque converter. There it goes. Now people often ask me, um, how hot should you let the transmission get? Well, I use 120 degrees as, a, as the, the point at which, um, if I can, I'll just pull over and take a rest. Uh, the oil starts to degrade at about 125 degrees, and once you're hitting about the 130, 140 mark, 
um, it's starting to leave tarnishes through the transmission and it's starting to harden the seals and damage them. So I use as a guide, once at, at, at 100, it's, it's pretty hot, but there's no need to pull over at that point. It's when you start to hit around 120, that's my limit. So this last section we've just driven, not particularly taxing on the car, um, but because you can see the torque converter here is unlocked, the temperature's just climbing. Again, you can see in this section the torque converter's not locked. Immediately the temperature just starts to climb. Well, you can see climbing this section. The torque converter is unlocked. We just hit the 120 mark and 98 on the pan temperature, which is the main oil reservoir. 121. Now you can just see there the torque converter locked, so the car changed gears and then decided to lock up and you can see now that the temperature is dropping and it will drop down to what the pan temperature is when it's locked. And that's because when it's locked there's no slip and when there's no slip uh, there's no heat being generated and you can see it there in the figures. An interesting thing now we're just coasting downhill and the torque converter is unlocked. Essentially, that the slipping in the opposite direction when you're coasting, and you can see that there's um, 23 degrees of temperature increase just by coasting. And again, we're back over that 120 mark. Well, okay, we're coming back to where we started from, and 20.7 on the fuel economy, and temperature sitting at the moment around 109 on the torque converter and 196 on the transmission pan and during the trip that actually maxed at about 124 on the torque converter and was about I think it was about 99 or 100 on the pan and looking at the figures the fuel is down to 19.3 and it was I think 20.7 when we used D so that's a saving of about so one and a half litres, so that's about seven, seven to eight percent. And more importantly, the, look at the temperatures. Uh, basically, the pan temperature is the same as uh, it was when we left. So it hasn't gone up at all. Uh, the hottest I saw it was once when the torque converter was unlocked. I think it was about, a, about 99 or 100, about there. And if you compare that with uh, the drive mode, um, we saw a torque converter temp of 124. Uh, and pretty much it stayed at those kind of, um, you know, around 100 or plus um, a lot of the time. So it really does go to show that using the transmission in a smarter way, you can get not only fuel savings, but you can also uh, reduce your transmission temperatures substantially. Alright, thanks for watching.